So why is this Apple's best ever iPad, but also their biggest problem? Hello and welcome back to Marcos Reviews. Thank you for subscribing if you have, and if you haven't subscribed, the button is just below. And don't forget, you can now support this channel on Patreon. There's a link in the description. You get some extra content each week, each month. And also, more importantly, you get access to my brilliant Discord server, which is full of very lovely people. Now, I bought the original iPad back in 2010. I was one of the very first early adopters. People did point and laugh at me for doing so, because back then it was just a big iPhone. There's no getting away from it. But I saw the potential in that device. And since then, I've owned, I think, pretty much every iPad since that original first version. Perhaps one or two I might have skipped, but I've been an iPad user since then. So for nearly 12 years, it's been quite an important device in my life. However, I still think it's one of those lust factor devices. No one really needs an iPad unless it's your main device. And for some people it is, which is fantastic. I'm quite jealous of those people. But for most people like me who, who have other things, so I have my iPhone, I have my Macs, I don't need an iPad. I can get away without having this. If this wasn't in my life, it wouldn't really make any difference to me getting things done. I just want one. And that's absolutely fine. You might be the same. And it's particularly fine if you go for the fourth generation iPad Air. Now I've been using this since December, I think last year. And in that time, I've just discovered that this is the best iPad Apple has ever made. But it does create an issue for both Apple itself and also its customers, which I'll get onto later. But in the meantime, this is my long-term review of the fourth generation iPad Air. We'll start with price because I think that's a very important consideration for any of these types of purchases. And the fourth generation iPad Air, the cheapest version of it is £579 or $579. And for that, you get 64 gig of storage. Now for some people that isn't enough. For me, it's absolutely fine. So since December, I've used 22 gig of that 64 gig. And the reason for that is pretty simple. I just don't store stuff on the iPad. Everything I have, all my documents, all my photos, everything I work on is on the cloud. All the apps I use are obviously pretty small. They don't take up much space. They too rely on cloud-based data and documents and things. So I just don't have any reason to store anything on the iPad. Now, if you sit in that same boat, which I think a lot of people do, if you don't, if you store stuff on your iPad, what, what is it? What sort of things, not literally what is it, but I'm, I'm, I'm interested in this. I, I like to know what people do with their devices. So if you find yourself maxing out 64 gigs of storage on an iPad, what is it you're putting on there? Is it, is it music? Is it photos? Yeah, I'm, I'm just interested. Let me, let me know in the comments. But if you're in the same boat as me, and you don't store stuff locally on an iPad. And at 579 for 64 gig, which you won't you won't use up, trust me, I think that makes this iPad a bit of a bargain. Now, if we compare the iPad Air 4 against the 11 inch iPad Pro, the iPad Pro is 749. And yes, the base level of that device has 128 gig, which is nice. But as I just mentioned, if you don't store stuff locally on your iPad, you don't need to spend that extra 200 pounds. The 11 inch iPad Pro, in my opinion, doesn't give you enough to warrant that £200, $200 extra spend. I'll get onto why later, but I just don't think it's worth it. I think it's really easy to get lost in comparing iPads based on their price and the storage options you get and all that sort of stuff. But if you just want an iPad that has the latest design, which I'll come onto in a moment, £200 cheaper than the iPad Pro and comes in some funky colors that you like, then I think that makes the iPad Air 4 a real bargain. Now, yes, there is the eighth generation iPad, which is the one that sits below the iPad Air. And that has the big bezels. It has Touch ID on the front of the device. It looks like an old fashioned iPad. You can get that for a lot less than this, granted. And for some people, that is a fantastic device. I think it's very good for education as well and that kind of stuff. But if you've got a relatively decent budget, the iPad Air 4, I personally, think delivers the best bang for buck. Now, I was a big fan of the 2018 redesign of the iPad Pro. I've still got the big daddy 12.9 inch iPad Pro from that year here. I use it every day. I only use it really these days for photo editing, which is a bit elaborate, but I just love this big screen, the pencil and Lightroom. It's just a, a great tool for editing photos. The reason I'm mentioning it is because the whole design aesthetic of this iPad Pro is very important for the way the iPad Air has developed. So when this came out, it had this brand new 
bezel free. It's not bezel free. There are still bezels there. They're, they're, they're just there. They're just smaller, basically. It was this kind of new design, kind of squared off edges. I think the best looking iPad Apple has ever made. What Apple has done, which I think is quite brave of them, if we can use that word, is they've carried that design aesthetic across to the iPad Air 4. So it too has the squared off edges. It has slightly bigger bezels than the 11 inch version of the Pro, but not very big. But if you compare this against the eighth generation iPad, it's night and day. It looks like such a more modern device, really. I think the same could be said about their decision to put Touch ID on the power button at the top. I'm a big Face ID user, so obviously I, I love Face ID on the iPhone. I love it on the big 12.9 inch iPad Pro as well. So I was a little bit worried about trying to get used to, to this kind of method of using touch ID up here on the iPad Air, but you very quickly get used to it and it becomes second nature after a while. So again, quite a bold move to go for that over Face ID. But more importantly, if you're coming from an old iPad Air or perhaps an eighth generation iPad or just a, an older iPad altogether and you wanna buy yourself a new one, the fact that Apple has given it this new look will make the upgrade massive. And it's something that you'll genuinely benefit from and enjoy every day, I think. It looks so different to old iPads. It's just such a lovely, lovely iPad. There's just one problem. I think Apple has really made a rod for its own back with this iPad Air. And the reason for that is very simple. This is just too good in a way. So I've not even spoken about the chip that sits inside this because it's barely worth talking about iPad chips because they're just, they're just so good. But this has the A14 Bionic which is ridiculously quick. It's faster than any other tablet on the market. Compare this against the M1 in the iPad Pro. Normal everyday use, you're not gonna notice any difference. And just to illustrate that, my 2018 iPad Pro feels as fast as the day I bought it, and it's now 2021. So, so if someone comes to me and says, look, Mark, I wanna buy a new iPad. I've got a relatively decent budget. I don't want that great big 12.9 inch one. What should I buy? I'm never gonna recommend the 11 inch iPad Pro. There's no reason to. Now there are some differences above and beyond the additional storage that you get on the base level. So the 11 inch iPad Pro has Face ID. It also has ProMotion, which is basically the refresh rate on the screen. It has a really tiny, tiny, slightly bigger screen, slightly better camera. And yes, it has the M1 chip in it, but as I just mentioned a moment ago, that doesn't make any difference. And actually none of those things make a difference. Whenever I use this, I don't remember, I've got an iPad Pro, which has all that stuff apart from the M1. When I switch between that device and this one, I don't miss the things that are on the iPad Pro. The only reason I would recommend the 11 inch iPad Pro is if someone came to me and said, look, I want a new iPad, I've got a good budget, and I do store a lot of files on my iPad. So I might, you know, it might be a lot of photos or video, whatever it might be. I probably would have to say, get the 11 inch iPad Pro, partly because the base level is not cheaper, but you get more, more storage for your money than you do with the iPad Air, but also because the 11 inch iPad Pro goes up to two terabytes of storage, which is just ridiculous. But if you need that much storage, you have no choice, you have to get the Pro. This maxes out at 256 gig. Now, something else I wanted to quickly mention in this long-term review is something actually I've bought quite recently, which is the white Magic Keyboard. Now, if you thought this only worked with the 11 inch iPad Pro, you're wrong, thankfully. It does work with perfectly, it fits perfectly the iPad Air 4. Now, I bought this one mainly because it's white and looks really cool, but also because I wanted to start using the iPad Air as my main writing tool. So I write every day. I publish on my blog pretty much every single day of the week. Up until now, my main writing tool has been the brilliant M1 MacBook Air. But I had a sneaking suspicion that this would make a brilliant writing tool, and it does. So whether I'm sat downstairs on the settee writing away in the morning, or I'm at my local coffee shop, or I'm in the kitchen tapping away, this is the device I'm doing that on. And if you want me to, I'll review this separately. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do that. Very briefly, it's, uh, it's lovely. It's a lovely typing experience. Now the keyboard is a little bit cramped, I'll give you that, and so is the trackpad. But it is a small keyboard, it's a small device. You have to expect a few compromises. And you're still getting full-size keys, you're still getting nice key travel, and it's just an enjoyable keyboard to type on. But what I love about this, this reminds me of netbooks. Now, I was, if you can't remember them, netbooks were this kind of trend in laptop design that came around probably kind of the mid-2000s, I think, yeah, maybe a bit earlier. They were basically tiny, small laptops. And I loved that idea. I loved the idea that you could have this little thing with a small screen that you could use for writing and email. And you know, if you're out on the road, it's this little thing you chuck into your backpack and away you go. It was great in principle. The problem was that netbooks were just dreadful. Terrible, terrible computers. This 
reminds me of netbooks and it kind of takes me back to that netbook era, but it's like an alternative reality where netbooks weren't crap. And what it is about this, it's the combination of the iPad Air size, the speed of it, it's just such a quick little device, the touchscreen, obviously, the trackpad and keyboard support that you get, the ease with which you can attach this and take it off. Everything about this makes it such a good writing tool, but also just a brilliant companion when you're walking around and you know, you're out and about. You don't have to sling a great big laptop in your backpack. So as I say, if you want me to, I'll do a separate review of the Magic Keyboard case, but I wanted to mention it in this long-term review of the iPad Air 4 because adding it to that iPad has made this such a complete device. And okay, this isn't cheap. I think it's about 270 pounds or something like that. So you're getting into laptop territory in terms of the price when you add the Magic Keyboard to the iPad Air 4. But I know this will last for years. It will just go on forever. If you wanna make it your main computer, it is absolutely superb. So the conclusion from my long-term review of the iPad Air 4 is really simple, you'll be glad to hear. If you've got a decent budget, if you want an iPad, if you don't want the great big 12.9 inch iPad Pro, and if you don't store loads of stuff on your iPad, just get yourself an iPad Air 4, and if you can stretch to it, get the keyboard case as well. If you do need more storage and you've got a bigger budget, just get the 11 inch iPad Pro, but I'd really think about this one. It's the best iPad Apple has ever made. I really hope that helped. If you wanna see my kind of comparison of all the iPads that you can buy at the moment, keep watching for a link to that video. But in the meantime, thank you as always for watching, and I'll catch you next time.